Hey guys, so I am doing a uh, spray painted and spray glitter tumbler now. I've already taped off the top and I forgot to tape off the bottom. Again, taping off the bottom is kind of new for me. But if you've not seen my other videos, um, look up glitter tumbler series in the search bar and you should be able to find the other videos and I'm going to link them in the uh, caption for this video so that you can find them. In the other videos I do a tumbler with loose glitter, but this time we're going to spray paint. Not everybody wants to do loose glitter. Um, so I want to show another option and these are the ones that I first did was the spray painted tumblers. So I've done more of these for sure and again I'm using green painters tape taped off the top. It's uh, not quite an inch uh, frog tape comes off very easily and cleanly and um, I removed my tape after I apply my first coat of epoxy maybe like 30-45 minutes um, after I put the epoxy on and then I'll retape it for my second coat but when I do my epoxy video um, which should be tomorrow it's supposed to come tomorrow uh, I will kind of go over all the little steps for that um, but I keep messing up here. Um, and I'm just taping off the bottom. I've found it's not really necessary to paint the bottom unless you just don't like the look of the tumbler by itself. But I found that it's easier and I use less product and it still looks great. Uh, and I like like the nice clean line that it gets, so I just tape it along the seam at the bottom and. Again, with my fine steel wool, just want to scuff it up a little bit so the paint has something to adhere to. Again, the epoxy is going to hold it, but uh, scuffing it up just a little bit helps as well. See, so anything you can do to uh, help each step is going to give you a better chance of success at the end. So I'm just scuffing that up and then take a little bit of my 70% IPA onto, again, I use old t-shirts as rags. So when we outwear them and my daughter outgrows them, I just cut them up, cut all the seams off and cut up different size pieces. I just want to get dust, fingerprints. Um, sometimes you get little pieces from the steel wool and I want to get all those off. And again, from my first video, the bags from Dollar Tree, the bowl covers, just put that on top and we're going to spray. So we're going to move over here and pardon my mess on my paper. I was uh, staining some wood last night, doing my first wood project last night, so that was fun. And I'm using Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel Spray. You can use gloss, satin, matte, it doesn't matter. Uh, again, the, the tip is to do um, light coats. And I just, I just bought this paint at Home Depot yesterday, this new color. And I did not open the cap. And I should have, because look at that. It's completely painted over. And it's not spraying. I'm trying to spray it into my trash. And it's not, so I'm going to have to do a little uh, resuscitation on that later. So we're going to change up our color. We're going to use the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. This is a satin aqua. So just to show that um, you can use any finish that makes you happy. And then it's a new pan. Get it, take it up nice and good. And as we discussed the other day, this is just a homemade um, Lazy Susan. You can buy a cheap one. Somebody even mentioned that they've seen them at Goodwill. So um, you could find one, five bucks on Amazon. They're, they're easy to find. So I'm just going to do light coats. Let me spray. It looks like to spray into my trash to make sure it's going to come out okay. And I'm just going to do light coats.
And I don't want, I'm, I'm filming on my phone and I don't want it to get paint on it. So that's why we're a little far away. Hopefully you can see pretty good what I'm doing. But I'm not, I'm not doing a super duper thick coat. If you can see, there are bald spots on my cup. It might be hard to see with the bright light, but there are definitely bald spots there. But I don't want too much paint. It needs to dry. And we're going to let it sit for just a minute so that that coat can evaporate for a second. And I seem to have a couple little bubbles. Hopefully those will get covered up. And we're going to glitter spray uh, after this. So this is going to be a multi-part video as well because this has to dry. And then we're going to glitter spray. And um, I'll probably do that. I like to wait 12 hours, but I might do it before I go to bed. Um, I might be up late, who knows, so that it'll be ready and we can epoxy it tomorrow night when I do the other one. That's, that's kind of what I'm aiming for. I couldn't do this earlier. Uh, my boyfriend was down here working on his uh, wood lathe, and it's extremely loud with the air filter and the dust collection and all that. So I had to wait my time to get down here and videotape. I'm terrified he's going to come down here and pick on me. He's been giving me a hard time the last couple of days. <laughs> he travels for work, so he's not usually here. But um, he got home early yesterday, and uh, he's kind of encroaching on my, on my space here. So we let it dry for a minute. I'm going to do another little thin coat. So there we go. Somebody made a comment on a video, the last one, that they would put marks so they could see how many times it spun it around. And that's a great idea if you want to mark your Lazy Susan if you're using one so you can kind of see how many spins spins you've done. I try to count in my head um, and see. Or even the little tab on the top of the lid. If you know where it starts when you spin, know where it ends up. Um, but it's looking pretty good after two coats. I want to do a third coat still. Uh, so this one we're going to paint. We're going to let it dry. Then we're going to do the glitter blast. Again, it's the, the Krylon glitter blast. And I have the diamond dust. So we're going to use that one. And then I used a triple thick after that, but I stopped doing the triple thick after that. I think on my last painted tumbler and it came out fine. I was kind of scared not to because, you know, everybody else was doing it, but um, it did fine. It's important with the loose glitter because you really need that sealant between your glitter and your epoxy uh, to keep the glitter in place, but uh, it's not really necessary for this. And I always do two coats of epoxy. So I'll let it dry for another minute. And then again, I leave the tape on until I apply the epoxy. And then maybe 30, 45 minutes into the epoxy, and we'll go over how often I turn it and everything. Um, I'll take the tape off. And then I'll let it cure for 24 hours. I apply my decal. I retape it. And then I do my second coat of epoxy. So we're going to do one more light coat. I think that looks pretty good. In any little imperfections that you might have, if you're going to be glittering over this, I wouldn't stress. The glitter is going to hide it. If you've got a giant thumbprint on there or a huge run or something like that, um, you know, and I can even see it. It looks like there's a gap in my tape, but it might just be where the two layers of tape go over. But I have mineral spirits, I have acetone, I have um, a lot of different things I can use to clean up that line if, if I need to when it's done. So I'm not, not going to lose any sleep over that. Um, you know, I, I have, like I said before, I tried to do my first ombre with spray paint and it was a complete disaster. I went and got one of my t-shirt rags and the acetone and I wiped it. I just took all the paint off. Um, and start it over again. So you can do that. If you mess it up, don't think the whole thing's ruined. Just take it off and try again. You know, I think we learn better from the mistakes we make than by watching other people do it right. So don't be scared to, to make mistakes. Um, 
again, I have a lot of um, space down here. I think he's got the windows open in the other room, so I'm not too worried about the fumes and whatnot, but if you're in a tight space, you know, wear a mask, try to do it outside. You can spray it outside and bring it right back in. If you have it on a Lazy Susan or something like that, it makes it real easy to carry. Just don't, don't tip it over. You don't want grass in your cup. But um, the, this is a quick video. There's not a whole lot to this step. I'm going to let it dry. Um, we'll see how late I stay up tonight, and I might glitter blast it tonight. And if I do, I'll video it. Otherwise, we'll glitter blast tomorrow. But um, you can do any color of glitter. The glitter blast, um, the diamond dust that I use is kind of like a shimmery kind of glitter. They have a gold. They have some that are um, opaque. There's glitter opaque spray paints. I've seen them at Home Depot. They, I was there yesterday and, and saw them. And so you can use those as well. When you After you spray turn your can upside down and kind of spray it into a trash can or outside or something and that will blow out what's still in the nozzle and it'll keep your nozzle from clogging up so that the next time you go to use it you'll still get that nice even spray. Uh, if you don't do that it could clog and you'll you'll have to do a little bit of surgery on your your spray to, to get the glitter to come out right. It likes to get clogged. But uh, until then, thanks again for all the support. I appreciate it guys. Have a good one.